Get this on the Triple M Network. A lot of people saying what's going to happen to the Get This podcast when we finish. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they're going to keep them up till December 31st. And then and then you can write to Tony and personally ask for a tape. <laughs> oh, Drop at his house. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're coming in here. I mean... We get the arse next Friday, but I will be back in here. Now, do we get presented with an arse? Do I we hope get a so. Little, I certainly little, hope it. An arse on a placard? <laughs> thank you. Oh, oh God, sure. who do I thank? <laughs> Who's it modelled on? But uh, I will be in to make sure the podcast continue to Thanks, finish Tony. off Brilliant. the story for international listeners. Good on you, Tony. That's enough business out of the way. What story have you ripped from today's headlines, Richard? A couple holidaying in Washington State, this is in yep. the United States, yep. mm-hmm. uh, got the shock of their lives when a cow fell 60 metres. Mm-hmm. A cow? Oh, a cow? 60 metres off a cliff and flattened the bonnet of their minivan. Right. It was just bam. You just saw something come down and hit the hood, said the driver, Charles Everson. Uh, the 270 kilo bovine smashed Ooh, the windscreen, yeah. collapsed yeah. the minivan's bonnet. The uh, Eversons weren't injured, but the cow had to be put down at the scene of the accident near the town of Manson. Sorry, that story sort of ended on a dark note. Did, really? <laughs> yeah, it would have been yeah. nicer if the cow sort of survived. Yeah, probably. Um, uh, how does a cow fall off a cliff? Did it fall asleep at the top of the, you know, because they do fall was over so- Was someone tipping it, possibly? Possibly. Um, um, was it a suicide attempt? Yeah, cry for help. Yeah, true. <laughs> Abseiling accident gone wrong. <laughs> well, know. it was one year old and uh, had been missing by its owner for uh, quite a while. Thank goodness we know it's one year old. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> it's taken the edge off. So is that the phone topic? How old are your cows? Maybe it was just a little young to be around a clifftop. Yeah. Oh, okay. Enough. And can I just see that story? So the people that one, escaped. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. Author of this story will be sacked. There's no reference to those people now going out and buying a lotto ticket. Ah, there it is. <laughs> Mistakes to be made for young players. Now, there's two questions there. Yep. Firstly, do they get to keep... Uh, the meat? Yeah. Yeah. I mean... I know, I know which way you're thinking. Because there's nothing as tender as a cow that's been dropped 60 metres. <laughs> it's freshly plunged mm, bovine. Mm, mm, that's good eating. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and also, it would be great if that was the, one of the like fears of one of the people in the car. They, their greatest fear in life <laughs> was animals falling on them. And they'd finally gone out. They'd finally got up the courage. Don't worry, baby. It's going to be fine. We'll go to Washington. Oh, God! It's happened. It's all Remain unscathed. Is that what we're doing today? What's fallen on you? What's fallen on you? What's fallen on you? I uh, used to work in an army surplus store, oh, yeah. and I had to <laughs> demonstrate the tents. You know the family tents? Yeah. And I'd have to demonstrate how quickly they could be erected to families who were visiting. Just you? Just me. Okay. And there were, a few, there were bars, there was instructions, there were pulleys and things, so i get inside, <laughs> erect the tent, and one day it just completely <laughs> collapsed around me. <laughs> so, and so you've got a completely collapsed family tent with me in the centre, still assuming the family's outside going, oh, as you can see, it comes down as easily as it goes up. <laughs> Fantastic features, the camp oven, and then just realising I'm talking to nobody in an empty showroom. Quickly got sacked from that job. That's uh, what's fallen on me, the axe! Oh, gosh. So mm. many times in Cavalry. Well, I went camping once. Uh, never do that, people, if you're listening. And uh, we were in a bunk bed situation. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like a cabin thing. Yeah, And, they, sure. you know, the people I was with, they did this trick where if you put the bed sort of slats apart yes. when someone goes in. Ah, oh, you're down through the And bed. I was lying on the bottom yeah. bank, middle of the night, someone <laughs> falls on your head. <laughs> you think it's a drop bear, you know. <laughs> yeah. Slip. A classic gag. <laughs> <laughs> but terrifying. Okay. And with the Cavalry family, how many high were the bunks no, stacked? Man, Eight, nine? It was like uh, the QE2, you know what I mean? It was... So you could get slats missing from all of them, and you yeah. could get a fantastic Inspect the Clouseau style plunge through several stories. Like a concertina. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> Collapsing Cavalry's. Mm. What's fallen on you, Richard Marslin? Well, this is very similar to something that happened to my dad, because a cow actually fell on him as well. <laughs> really? Yeah. Extra yeah. footage. That's true. Cop that, Mr. Marslin. Uh, we had a pet cow and she was kind of a bit too humanised. You told you know? me that, yeah. A bit too Dad, humanised. Dad got very close to her. He used to, you know, sing to her and like, yeah. when he was milking her and what Before have you. Before you know it, they're hogging the Xbox. <laughs> Don't humanise them. <laughs> and one time Dad was in the paddock trying to open the gate mm-hmm. yeah. and the cow just <laughs> felt the urge, saw a bit of a moment, seized that window and then proceeded to jump on the back of my father. Mounted him. A mounting thing, like went to mate him, like a dog that would do your leg, that there kind of go. thing. Except a really massive cow. Ah. There you go. And the spawn of that hideous accident panels our show to this very day. No, that's a terrible thing to say. I've still got the hooves. <laughs> what a moment. It's hard to panel a radio show with Daisy, hooves. Daisy, what are you doing? Daisy, what are you doing? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. <laughs> 
this friends. Thing? What's fallen on you? That didn't kill you mm-hmm. or hurt you too badly. Ah, good. good because we don't want any trouble. Yeah, yeah. Good work. Good work, yeah keep it light. Mm. Yeah, keep it light. Keep it mid-afternoon radio. Keep it bovine. Well, if it did kill you, it would be hard to call in, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But obviously from beyond the grave. You can move a <laughs> banana, Richard's grandmother style. True. <laughs> G'day, Trent. This thing didn't actually fall on me. We okay. were um, out goose shooting. Oh, yes, yes. They eat all the grass. So yeah. we, there was about 20 of us all up. Mm-hmm. Yep. And my father lined up a goose with a shotgun. Mm-hmm. And he dropped it, and my mate Bando was about 10 metres in front of us. It just flew straight out of the sky, dead. Came down, smashed him straight in the back of the head and dropped him. Brilliant. Fantastic. Another happy goose hunting story, Trent. <laughs> yes. Thanks, man. Are you from New Zealand, Trent? That would be correct. Could you do me a huge favour? I'll do you a kookaburra. <laughs> no, that's amazing. That's, uh, that's amazing. They come over oh, here. They take our jobs, they yeah. impersonate our fauna, <laughs> and they right. shoot geese out of the sky. Nicely done, Trent. Thanks, Trent. But what about the guests? What about Tom Gleisner and Santo Chalaro? Thank you very much. We came in on the tail end of uh, What's Fallen On You, yes. and uh, yes. I think the real show was out there in the uh, booth. Cecilia was taking the phone calls. Hello, Triple M, What's Fallen On You? Right. And how badly damaged was your penis? <laughs> <laughs> that call never got to air, did it? Oh, no. thanks for calling in, Glenn Robbins. But <laughs> that, that reminds me of the applause at the Kevin Rudd launch yesterday. Oh, oh, was don't that? you love it? We've, we've sort of mimicked the American style, you know, the Democrat conventions, yeah. but where that, that sort of really hyped up audience. I mean, you haven't seen an no. a, a audience that on edge probably since... Visards Tonight Live, you know, <laughs> when they had to applaud every guest. Wasn't John Deeks? Wasn't yeah. he had an exhausting schedule of conducting <laughs> that audience? And and that thing where you've got to applaud every statement, even <laughs> even the ones that are just kind of but matter in the of fact. show, didn't they just have the Letterman audience? Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't know. They dragged See, it. See, the, the young comedians are inheriting the old shows. <laughs> so Our old cynicism so being so passed cynical. on. So cynical. <laughs> but there was a lot of. Uh, I don't know where they get the teenagers at political rallies. Yeah. They're all yeah. wearing the new leadership t shirts. Yeah. And dancing up in the balconies. A bit Hillsong for my liking. Very Hillsong. <laughs> mm, mm. I mean, it's bullies out the front yeah, waiting. You absolute, know. <laughs> absolute. Just go, have you. fun, kids. But it's bizarre, Sandra. You've followed a few election campaigns. Have, have you ever seen two leaders sort of promising less? Like they've got this thing that they don't want to be seen to be you know, overspending. overspending. No, oh, that's oh, right. No, I've never seen that before. That, that oh, Okay, he spent that much. I'll spend yeah. even less. We're going to give you less. <laughs> There'll be no tax cuts. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What disconcerted me about the whole Labor thing is that he's got the new leadership, hmm. but then with a full stop. Maybe I'm what too much of a stickler. It's, on not, a sentence, it's it? not a sentence. It's oh, not a sentence. It's not a It's just new leadership. Yes. No, ex- not, is it too up yourself to have an exclamation mark? <laughs> yes, that, you won't yes, be the no, underdog. That, that's a musical. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You, you're, you're right. It, it is. It's not. leadership the musical. But don't they love a computer? They, that seems to be with both yeah. uh, Howard and Rudd giving kitties computers. Yes, yeah, seems to be. Right. Yeah. It's obviously, it's researched well. Mm. Have we got that's that through the roof? We had a clip somewhere of John Howard trying to say the word megabytes. That was a bit of. It's not going to go well, is it? More ultra bits <laughs> than any other people with computers. We've got more Vita Brits per second than any other country. But every child will have access to their own computer at school. As the, you know, no child will be living in a house with dial-up by oh, 2010. That's right. It's what kind a of world. the yeah. What a world. Every child will have access to hotplumpers.com <laughs> by the time we're finished. None too soon, Tony. Absolutely. None too soon. Yeah, you both of you have kids. Are they uh, getting onto the internet uh, sort of age? Mm. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, how's that go? Well, there's a lot of gold tube, YouTube, a lot of sport action on YouTube. Yeah. A lot of blocking. Do you have to do blocking, Tom? The fi- no, if you put the filter on it, it, you can't even get the word ship down on your computer. <laughs> it's, just, it's hopeless. It just slows everything down way too much. So, no, but we've taken the advice that you make sure the computer is in kind of like a public room in the house so the kitties uh-huh. can't go off into yes. their own yes. little Sneak chamber. Off. And, you know, you occasionally, it's just a lot of Warhammer and World of Warcraft kind of stuff yeah. at our house. So yeah. like, I, my, my kids just want to go on YouTube and watch people doing Guitar Hero on YouTube. <laughs> So have you a, seen that? What is I that? I have. What's it's a video on? of people playing a video game at yeah. their house. Insane. Mm. Anyway, that's... Well, there's a lot of disturbing stuff on internet. And what was the headline this week? YouTube kid 
kills three. Oh, that's right, yeah. And I thought, oh, not the fat kid on the catapult. No, don't tell me that's gone horribly wrong. <laughs> it may well have. But we've, no, we've had guidelines from the school on how to sort of keep the, you know, keep the kitty safe. What, what is that? What are we looking out for? Basically, it's... unplug it at the wall and you're safe. Exactly. Bang, yeah, there it gone. is. But They're did done. the government launch at like a cost of about $800 million, mm. their new uh, blocking software? You could download a filter, right? but it came with a lot of pornographic spam. We oh, tried right, that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we just don't want that <laughs> on our... Santo Chalauro is with us, so Tom Gleisner is here. Santo just saying very disappointed that um, we didn't have the Hoon Advisor theme queued up. You might oh, want I would have had it. Or get the, out, the, Mr. Barth. The new version by the Plain White Tees. The, <laughs> the, the, the human Santo could do it live. We just, yeah, I could do just do the last bit. Yeah, la, 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 la. the whole thing if you want it. Come on. No, no, yeah. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Hoon Advisor. Was a regular segment on Melbourne Triple M back in the late 80s. Can you remember anything that you used to do in those days? Not really. All I know is that I could never say the right amount of la 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 la's. You know what? It's just okay. doesn't fit in. La 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 la. How but, many were? Uh, yeah. It's like that. You know the uh, the car horn there. They always miss notes. The car horn's always never quite tuned properly. I don't think they could get the rights to it, son. No. Wasn't that segment, I mean, it was your character of Gino, and then there was constant references to your cousin Enrico. Who's a real cousin. A real guy, and is he still... He's still about. He loves his car still. But I remember at my wedding, I actually performed as Gino. I decided to... At your own wedding? I remember that. Yeah, I actually decided to... Serenade my wife as Gina. She had no idea what was. One of the reasons was that I could actually get my cousin Enrico out with me. <laughs> we finally one, met Enrico yeah, yeah. in the, the flesh. real Enrico. He was very excited. Wedding. He was very. Happy. And by coincidence, I remember at Tom's wedding, he uh, came out and performed as the photocopier repairman from Frontline. <laughs> <laughs> Just it was a crowd pleaser, Tony. <laughs> hey, are you guys into opera at all? Opera? I don't know much no. about. I, I've seen Don Giovanni. I went last night. How it, was it? It was an Australian opera's uh, production. It's it's sensational, but mm. it's a very um. This Certain conventions you've kind of got to get your head around in opera. For example, if someone says, and they do in this, I shall put this mask on, yes. basically they just put a piece of dental floss around their eyes. Right. They're unrecognisable Absolutely. to anyone else on the stage. <laughs> or they'll declare, I'll just secrete myself over here. They can stand behind a thimble and not be seen by <laughs> anyone on the stage. Absolutely right. I guess it's the only way they can get to do these. But there's, there's actually some special effects. Like the end of Don Giovanni. I was just about to ask this. Go on. What mm. happened in the one you saw last night? Well, cause he, because he's like a, basically a bad guy, a womanizer, yes. and he forces himself upon the ladies. Mm. He has to. He has to be punished. Right. He descends into the flames of hell. Oh, how's that achieved? Well, a trapdoor, and uh, we know in amateur <laughs> theatre, trapdoors can always be <laughs> always trouble, very dangerous. Uh, but uh, no, it, it worked well. But I wondered, how did they do it back in Mozart's days? How did they descend into the flames of hell? Well, don't worry about Mozart's days because I saw Don Giovanni uh, up, up in Sydney about mm. five or six years ago, and I was sitting up the back, very poor seats. I couldn't see. I was sitting in the seats where you couldn't see the sub. Oh, yes, 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 so yes, it was yes, a yes. lovely Italian romp for me. I had no <laughs> idea what was going on. And for the trapdoor, they didn't so much go for a trapdoor as they did him ducking behind oh, yes. a little flat that sort of <laughs> that, up. that sprung <laughs> up mm, with some mm. cellophane on yes. and some lights hitting it, and yes. he's giving it a bit of ah. Yes. Yeah. He's just doing the old walking downstairs That's escalator. Oh. <laughs> and flames are always a killer, especially even in amateur theatre, because you're not allowed to put any exactly. anything resembling a flame on stage. No, it's mm. usually ribbons with a fan. That's blowing right. Them up. <laughs> and the, and the, the fan does doesn't work, so it's basically <laughs> someone waving a streamer and going, mm, the fire's burning. It's Can good. I ask, were the Black Thunders out the front last night? <laughs> was, it, was it one of ours? No, it was <laughs> ABC <laughs> FM, I think, presenting that one. I think my favourite theatre story is yours, Tony. When Didn't you once have to do a sword fight and there was only one sword available? I, I saw that in a play that I was in at, yeah. at school. Someone stole one of the swords, so they went, we can still make this work. <laughs> so one bloke on stage had the sword. The other bloke was in the wings with a broom. Yeah. So that half the fight was happening on stage. So I was chink, chink, chink. And then the guy with the sword went into the wings. They quickly swapped over and the other one came out. That's great. Idea. Very. But, you know, you've got to improvise. You've got yeah. to make it work. <laughs> Can you just explain, Sando, what you told me happened in a play at university oh. with a, a fake knife? Because I've always thought that no. this must happen in plays, it but happened. I never knew it really happened. It wasn't at university. It was at school. Right. And uh, I was in Julius Caesar, the school production yep. of Julius Caesar. And I. it was the very first play I ever did at school. And uh, I I was amongst many of the other parts that I played, apart yep. from you know guard number one. Everything. I was yeah. one of the conspirators. Oh, you're and, a great and conspirator. And I had the retractable knife. It was actually made of metal. It yeah. was weighty. Oh, okay. And I came yeah. up. And what, my best friend, Paul Callio, he was Julius Caesar. I stabbed him. Accidentally let go, and the retractable knife <laughs> bounced back off him into the crowd. Into actually, the audience. <laughs> and Fantastic. actually, stab someone for real. <laughs> there you go. Excellent.
<laughs> it's a happy and, ending. Yeah, it was actually, yeah, someone in the audience actually said, Ed too. Ed too, Santo. <laughs> well, that's not what we're talking about, uh, amateur theatre disasters today. We're, we're talking about, we've done this before, it's massively popular. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't think it would be. What do you hate that everyone else likes? Do you oh, have stuff like question. this? I do. Um, New Year's Eve. Oh, give it a oh, round. Yeah. <laughs> It's just too much pressure. Everyone has these amazing New Year's Eves, which yeah, they yeah. don't remember for about a week, and then, oh, wow. Uh, I struggle to get to about 9.30. Is that right? Yeah. So Sorry. I love New Year's. You're looking at me like it's a bit sad, aren't you? No, Ed? it's not sad. but I <laughs> It just, is sad. No, it's not sad, it but sad. Uh, in the New Year's Eve from 99 to 2000, I went to a party on the beach, mm. past 11 chicks. Fantastic. I agree with you, Tom, on the New Year's Eve. I, once I remember going to like my parents' beach house um, and... I must have fallen asleep, but I reckon at about nine o'clock, and I woke up in darkness. I basically got up and banged my head. I was sleeping underneath the billiard table. And oh. my head oh, that'll happen. <laughs> Let's throw billiard tables on the park. Get them around. <laughs> <laughs> They've been getting away yeah. there for but too the long. Thing, the thing I hate is, can I just, I uh, just a couple of ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah give it Spring us. racing carnival. Oh, spring yeah, racing yeah. carnival. Give it around, yes. I reckon I'm starting to get there. I hope people don't get upset, but the Australian cricket team. Oh, the Australian cricket team. Oh, yeah. 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 And while I'm there, I reckon. Life this... itself! Give it a <laughs> I reckon the flag. The oh, flag? Oh, I reckon the flag. No, you've gone too far. No, no. The, no, no, no not just the Australian flag. I, not just the Australian one. I just don't All like flags. flags. All like flags. flags. Flag. Flag. Yeah. So, I don't like the idea of loving the flag. Yeah. Don't okay. like it. Fair enough. Don't like it at no, all. No. I, I think you should only have flags at sporting events to barrack for them. Mm. Okay. I don't like this thing about, oh, you can't burn the flag. That's all very well, but yeah, I'm going to put it as a cape. sporting events on the pile. <laughs> hey, no, no. Tony, the cheese roll, the bird man rally. I love the bird man rally and the cheese rolling and the world poker tour, if those are sports. What about world's strongest man? Oh, that is some good ones. Brilliant. Okay, fair enough. I tell you what, I I love weddings. I love going to weddings. Do you? But I hate movies about weddings. <laughs> oh, and yeah. I have a theory that Australians will go to anything if it has a reference to weddings in the title. Yes. Remember that film Runaway Bride? Yep, yep. That was an appalling film. It's a massive <laughs> box office business just because yeah. it had the word bride yeah. in the title. And I'm telling you, if they put out a movie called Anthrax Wedding, people would go, <laughs> oh, let's go to that lovely wedding film that's out As now. long as there's a scene where the bride, the aforementioned bride, gets to try on a Variety of oh, bridal yeah. gowns, yeah, yeah. in possibly accompanying you know music and a bit of a montage. Walk around yeah, sunshine, yeah, walk around sunshine or brown eyed girl. You can't go mm, wrong. You're in. Mm. Uh, let's let someone else uh, throw Rich. some hate on oh, the fire. I was going to go with Spring Racing Carnival what, as well. What are you? What's no, up, guys? Only because uh, you know the saddest phrase I think all year is "What tent?" Because uh, yeah. this week uh, I was asked, "Hey, I might see you at the Osterio tent at the races." Oh yeah. Uh, what tent? I wasn't invited. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed that Ed doesn't. <laughs> because Ed sees the Spring Racing Carnival as a hotbed of quality tail now. I do. Is that why you're flying the flag? Yes. Tony, in a word, yes. Do you- uh- Sorry? Oh, you know where the Spring Racing Carnival gets me down? It's radio stations uh, use it as an excuse for um, racing themed ads. Oh, okay. <laughs> and they're off and running. And phrases like, and they're off and running in the crazy crints bargains. It doesn't work. There is no connection between cheap. White goods no. and horses. Yeah. No, I agree. Give radio stations a serve, please, <laughs> Mr. Marsden. Cop hey, that. Hey. Oh, have we got everything out of our systems? Yeah, no, all, all of mine are based around personal relationships we shouldn't go into. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> have we left anything for the listeners? Let's find out. Hello, Richard. How are you? I actually hate the cheese rolling contest that they've got over in England where they roll down the hill. And it's not so much the contest. It's just I feel it's a waste of cheese on the British. <laughs> it's just not needed. But, Richard, the winner gets the cheese. Mm. Exactly. Why waste it on the British? Oh, wow. Send it elsewhere. Send it my way. Uh, for- I'll not even run for it. I've I'll never... What is the sporting element really, though? Is it a race against the cheese? Are yeah. they trying to catch the cheese? They're often the very cheese. fat men. So basically, <laughs> it's how fast a fat man can fall down a hill. That's the best <laughs> way to really describe hard, it yeah. on ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> Chasing that runaway gouda. Yeah. Uh, Thank yeah, you, Richard. Well, that is popular. Who's uh, going next? Good day, Jan. How are you? Hi, how are you? Excellent. What do you hate that everyone else likes? Um, AFL. Oh, the football. <laughs> what is it that you've got against it? Well, there's a couple of things. The one's a really big one, which is that AFL um, fallen angels don't seem to be required to give their medals back, which um, okay. Olympic medalists do. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Which yeah. I find really irritating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Giving back the, the medals and things. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. People should be allowed a few transgressions. I don't Rubbish. think. I don't 
I don't agree. If they have to give it back in one sport, mm. i.e. the Olympics, yeah. then they have to give it back in all sports. I mean, what sort of message? Mm. I mean, seriously, I know this is funny, but what kind of message does that send to people, so or especially to young people? You're saying that if Steve Johnson shows up at uh, you know training with the sunscreen moustache, one more time he should be forced <laughs> to give back the Norm Smith? <laughs> Oh, yes, and I think there's a certain footballer with the initials BC oh, who yes. is ultimately being considered being reinstated. Do you mind? Well, I mean, what's that well, all about? I think that's a good point. Well made. <laughs> <laughs> who else is angry? Ed Cavalier. Thank you, Jan. <laughs> Hello, Matt. Those silly, stupid Christmas movies they bring out at the end of every year. No, oh, oh, yes. 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 Absolutely. Yes. Which one are you uh, not lucky uh, to look off? with Vince Vaughn and Fred uh, oh. the other bloke. Red Claws and the other bloke. That's not even a pun title. Or no, am I missing it? Not. <laughs> no, it's not. It sounds like there is one buried there, but it's not. It's just Fred. Fred. At least Tim Allen's the Santa Claus yeah, and the yeah. Santa Claus <laughs> too. Brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. On a whole stuff. other level. I, I, I agree. There must be one that you like, though, surely. Uh, probably Jingle All the Way with Donnie in it. That's the only one. <laughs> well, planes, Trains that. and Automobiles. That was yeah, a Christmas great. movie. That, that, was, that was an absolute That was actually funny, yeah. And, of course, Christmas Vacation has, uh, you know, the scene of the shitter. Well, <laughs> and, you know, if you hate Christmas movies, I recommend uh, Bad Santa with Billy Bob Thornton. It's not bad as well. Not yeah. one for the kids. Mm. Okay. And The Wizard of Speed and Time. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Okay. Uh, who's next? Who's angry? Hi, Peter. How are you? It might be un-Australian, but um, Warwick Todd's to- um, Tom's mate might know, but I hate Steve Waugh. Oh, oh hang on. Yeah. What's, what's wrong with Tugger? My mother's been bad at number six all your career and make runs. Well, she is good. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but he, he had to write the diaries as well. That was a full-time job, buddy. He never once stood up. Put him at number one or number three. No, I was coming number six when all the hard work's done. But hang on, hang on. He was, at least he was a great personality. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Pete. Uh, Tony's elapsed into unconsciousness. We'll have yeah, to move I, on from I this topic. I only know the Sheffield Shield cricketers. Is Carl Rackerman going to be there you go, at any moment? Oh, well, thanks, everybody, for calling. Wow. Just quickly, Tom. Mm. Warwick Todd, what is his status? You know the bloke. He's unfortunately injured at the moment. His yeah. liver's given way again, so he's, <laughs> he's out. But uh, you, you must be enjoying the worn... Uh, Mura Litteran feud. Oh, yes. That, was that English? Well, <laughs> Tony's just pleased movie. that someone else is having a feud this year. I'm with you, Tom. I think I'm yeah. taking Mura Litteran, whatever that is. I'm not sure. He, did he call him a miserable man today? He did. These are the two number one. Uh, well, Warren holds the bowling record. Mm. He's taken uh, 708 wickets in his career. And Mura Litteran, who's a Sri Lankan currently here in Australia, is on 702 wickets. Mm. Oh, okay. You with me so far? I, I'm not really with you, but I do. Who's. Chavandavas? Chavandavas. Chavandavas. Mm. Mm. Oh, is that a cricketer? No, that's a curry dish. But oh, um, <laughs> What's his theme song, Richard? Chavandavas is running and everybody's clapping. <laughs> damn it, damn it, damn it. <laughs> La, 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 I'm la. trying to drag just a tiny bit of sport I'm into still this with you, Tom. crazy two-hour film fest <laughs> before it gets pulled off the air, okay. and this is the response I get. I'm still with you, Tom. Thank you, Tom Gleiser and Santa Trelari for your fantastic oh. contributions over the last two years. Thank good, you, guys. Good luck to you, guys. Good luck to you. You're bright young fellas. You've got a big future in front of you. Yeah, yeah. we've still got one of the Black Thunders. That's, <laughs> that's what we're thinking at the moment. Absolutely we're right. We're busting out of here into just, thunder. Just, but just show a little bit more respect. Mm. You know, just mm. a little bit more respect. We were going to bring a gift, Santa. We forgot. We forgot. It was a nasal spray thing, and we'll get oh, to you later on. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> Peter Costello, I mean, hasn't he been a big part of our show for the last two years? Wonderful contributor, always gives his time. Let's hear one final spray from Peter Costello. Mr Costello, uh, the uh, the latest poll... Polls. Yes, the latest poll suggests that you uh, you may be out of a job after... uh, Well, after Saturday, you preparing for defeat? The only thing I'm preparing for... Uh, Kerry, is, uh, well, the fundamentals of solid uh, economic policy. The gear is turning, as they've been doing for the last uh, 11 years with me, Peter Costello, uh, at the helm. And uh, I'm preparing for, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that people will recognise that the, the best team, the only team, who knows what they're doing is in charge. I mean, you're not going to let a bunch of kids in here like Wayne Swan. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, the voters will. Well, the voters can, uh, you know, recognise surely that you've got a kid there who, who can't even turn on his own calculator, well, who's being dropped off at Parliament by his mum every okay, morning. Really? He's pooing his pants. Well, he, hang on. No, he does. He, he poos. Yeah, sorry, how did we get here? I mean, what are we supposed to do, Kerry? We'll put pigs on our noses and let Wayne Swan, uh, poopy pants, get in there and start twiddling with the. Uh, knobs of common sense that I've uh, 
carefully set over 11 years of uh, solid economic fundamental leadership. What about Kevin Rudd? Kevin Rudd, oh yeah. Let's let Norman Bates uh, uh, hand you the keys to your hotel room. Pop in there. You yeah, just, uh, you might want to have a shower. I'll, I'll be in in a moment. Mother? What is that, Mother? Okay. Destroy the economy, Mother. Right, none of this oh. makes any sense. Look, Look, Kerry, here's what makes sense to me. A $10 billion deficit... A $94 uh, billion dollar debt. Sorry. That's what I inherited 11 years ago from Paul Keating. Yes. Yeah, so and I've been cleaning up that mess for 11 years and look where it's gone. Right. Okay, but didn't Bob Hawke say the same thing when he took office? Oh. He inherited John Howard, yeah, yeah. Uh, who right, was okay. the treasurer. He yeah, but, uh, you know, John Howard was simply uh, cleaning up the mess of the Whitlam years when Labor... Uh, was out of control because of inexperience. But weren't the Whitlam years a response to uh, the previous governments of, uh, well, going right back to Sir Robert Menzies? What was Sir Robert doing at the end of, uh, you know, the war when uh, you had Chifley uh, and Curtin and that lot uh, running rampant? Yes. I mean, we're still paying off the okay, debt. Okay, well, Chifley's debt. Yes, but didn't Curtin. Uh, have to deal with uh, what he'd inherited from, indeed, Sir Robert Menzies yeah, but, in the United Australia. Yeah, but Sir Robert was uh, simply uh, cleaning up uh, Scullin's mess, 1929 to 1932, the Great Depression. You know, there's coincidence. There's Labor in charge of the Depression. Yes, but... Uh, now, do you want that on Saturday? But surely the... Uh, the Labor governments between the wars were simply uh, cleaning up the mess they'd inherited from... Uh, oh, from uh, from the Commonwealth Liberals. That wasn't us. That's a, that's a previous mob deacon. Yes, but... Uh, but the protectionist party... Look, if you want to go back that far, Kerry, what about Chris Watson and the Labor Party of 1904? What a crazy time that was. Do we want the Watson government back on Saturday? Those mad times? You know, overspending on drays? Uh, we'll all be getting around in rope belts. Is that what you want? Yeah, take the plasma back. I'll just get on the back of this horse and cart and pop down to uh, Sovereign Hill. Do we want to go back to that? Because that's what the Labor Party gave us under Watson in 04. Yes, but Watson uh, came after Deacon and Barton. Yeah, but Barton was... Uh, uh, yes. He was... Uh, well, look what he had to work with after that bloody Aboriginal lot. You know, look what they left him. Nothing. How could you create something out of that? They knew nothing of the economic fundamentals. And we're still paying that off. I'm still paying off the Aboriginal mess. And, uh, and you know what, Kerry? I've never once said sorry. Mr Costello, thanks for your time. Keep that in mind on Saturday, Kerry. Oh, we're getting ready, aren't we? You sure are, Tone. You know what it's almost? Nope. Son. It's almost the weekend! Oh. oh, young people, what are you getting up to? All right, kids, uh, invent a new way of sitting. Uh, label and catalogue your old VHS recordings of the O'Needen Lodge. Uh, I'm, I'm going I'm to buy a Mogwai and feed it after midnight. <laughs> uh, call your friend's home piece. Uh, stay home on Saturday and bottle some fruit. Re yeah. Refuse to read stuff. Cut up plastic rings on milk containers so platypuses don't get their bills stuck in them. Uh, have sex in a bed. Oh, yeah. Laminate your legs. Perfect your impression of hyacinth buckets. Hang out with that tree man in Indonesia. Uh, uh, make out with someone you're pretty sure is your cousin. Wonder aloud whether sea change will ever come back. Uh, come up with a new emoticon. Uh, 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 bounce down the street using only your gonads uh, and a fruit. <laughs> Take a whole lot of ice and then fire off an angry letter to thumbs down in your local community newspaper. Uh, 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 kick back with a sense of achievement after smoking uh, legal stuff. Legal stuff. Log on to antiquesroadshow.net and guess how much that French commode is going for. Uh, 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 give your mum a subscription to Plumpers. <laughs> Spend the afternoon machine gunning shots of LucasAid. <laughs> What else? Oh, what are the uh, kids into? Oh. Oh, you must have one more in the tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah get, get a bin full of jello uh, and uh, and throw a kid in it. Uh, kid that can't swim. Get involved in an illegal drag race between two stolen paddle steamers <laughs> in a canal. Uh, go to a fjord and berate it for being not late enough. What else, Richard? Listen really loud to Tom Jones' Chills and Fever. <laughs> Try and understand John Lawson's mind and the music. Finally get round to watching Drowning by Numbers. Oh, God, that's too much for me to even that's, cope with. Look, that's a lot of ideas, young'uns. <laughs> you know, we're here to help. Good ideas, plenty of Ooh, them. Goodness. Somebody has been saying, are we going to replay those Blast FM sketches? Oh, those well, are a killer. They were replaced, technically, because yeah. they were from... Um, well, that you can find them on two... 
rare albums from the 1990s. Are they uh, now officially rare? You can. Uh, yeah, they're going for 39 cents on eBay. Okay. That's 39 cents American, I'll have you it's know. pretty good. <laughs> the albums are Poop Shoot and Eat Your Peas by uh, Martin Malloy, who were a sort of um, Alan Parsons project style supergroup in the <laughs> mid 90s. Oh, excellent. It's some very, very long albums. Yeah. <laughs> what sort of music do we like to hear about now? Oh, of course. Yeah. Everybody, take the climb, climb up talk back mountain, there's no time, hey but we're not counting, maybe if we had a shorter intro song we'd be... Running on time for the first show since April 23. It's never happened. It's not going to happen. Workplace yeah. conditions. We've heard about work choices and operational reasons. It's a big deal in the election time. It sure is. But what's going on in the streets? Yeah, you know, what's the real workplaces. I can't believe these ads with the guitar and the mandolin and yeah, the sorry, yeah, Mr. Howard. Yeah, and, yeah. Now well, let's talk real world. Let's get in there, Tone. Have you what, been subject to any? What conditions are you living under? When I was working at the video store eight and a half years worth yeah. rich yeah. Uh, I uh, one of the conditions was if an ice cream fell on the ground you got to eat it oh okay see that's an interesting workplace condition you could have that put in your contract I should have in your it. AWA yeah, absolutely right and did you dive in but were you sort of knocking them onto the ground I tell you what it was almost impossible to walk past the ice cream fridge <laughs> without a magnum leaping to its death <laughs> suddenly you just turn into the clumsy chef from Sesame Street you know just a little almond fellow would you know climb up the side <laughs> somehow open up the lid and fling himself out that's a top workplace condition mm. Uh, mm. I used to work at a radio station uh, oh, hang on. It was this one. Uh, 20 years ago. 20 years ago this year. A lot of so, people, can I say, around the network just went, oh, God. Oh, what's he going to say? No, no, none of these people work here anymore, no. and it's really from the past anyway. It couldn't happen now. The word bugger, the word bugger was bugger. banned on the radio, and the oh. boss came in and he said, look, I don't mind the odd bastard. I don't mind the odd shit. But none of this bugger talk on the radio, all right? Yeah. And we go, well, what's wrong with bugger? That's a great Aussie word that people mm. love to bandy about. And he's gone, don't you know what that means? And we'd go, no, no, we're not exactly <laughs> sure what it would be. Which would prompt a mime demonstration. <laughs> Guys, this is what it is, right? You don't want that going out. <laughs> we're going, hang on. Were you in deliverance? <laughs> and every time, you know, we, we'd be saying on here just so that he'd come in and do the mime. <laughs> What are we not supposed to do? Oh, that's what we're not that's supposed to do again. Thanks for the heads up. By the way, you've got a pretty mouth. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, workplace conditions. Richard? Mr. Marslin. Oh, well, uh, stand-up comedy conditions. Oh, oh, often. Yeah. I had a gig last night, in fact, and we did... did you tell us about... You never tell us. We did the Zoo Comic Strip Challenge, which is that thing where in yep. the Zoo magazine, yep. every time you make a woman laugh, uh, she's got to remove a piece of clothing. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Um, when I finished my 10-minute set, uh, all the women were dressed in scarves, Gore-Tex <laughs> coats and Cossack hats. <laughs> That's not true, but I have done a couple of... Uh... <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> but I have done a tight 10 on a hay bale at a community fete um, in broad sunlight with no atmosphere whatsoever and no any sort of amplified sound, just sort of, you know, it looked like just a madman doing poetry. <laughs> Richard Marshall, he's done a tight 10 on a hay bale. What have you done? Okay, what kind of conditions are you slaving under at your workplace? Working under kids. That's what we want to know. So call us up now, and the number is. Get ready, here it comes. Get a pen. That's right. Get a pen. Here it is. Call on one triple three five three triple M. That's right, one triple three five three triple M. Yes, it's one triple three five three triple M. Triple M. Triple M. Now here's Nickelback. No, 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 it's not. Good Charlotte, of course, it is a Triple M. G'day, Rob, how are you? Afternoon, Ed. How you going, mate? Oh, not too bad, how are you? What's going on at work? He's eating a sandwich, that's what he's doing, Rob. Sorry about that. That's what I have to labour under, that's my conditions. What are you doing? 
Oh, well, I work at a news agent, and yeah. like it, uh, if a magazine, say Zoo, for example, yeah. was to accidentally get ripped, oh, yeah. uh, that magazine's got to go home. Oh, and I'm guessing they call you Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Okay, how damaged does it have to be before you can uh, keep it and have your way with it? Uh, well, uh, I don't have my way with magazines. Yeah, of course, but, uh, that couldn't happen in a newsagent. I'm pretty much the judge of how damaged it needs to be. So. And what part of the country is your news agency in? Uh, up in Sydney. Okay. Now, are you in a suburb where, you know, I love going into a news agent and saying, why are they selling the New Yorker here? <laughs> Who's buying Quadrant here? <laughs> is there a magazine you just cannot shift at your news agents? Oh, uh, there's a few. Um, uh, a Big favourite of mine is the Racing Pigeon Pictorial. Oh, oh hello. <laughs> hello there. Now, Rob, I'm going to go out on a limb here. Is that mostly mm. pigeons uh, <laughs> flying around and around? Pretty much, yeah. Thank you very much. Are they still printing Trailer Boat Monthly? That's one of my favourites. <laughs> and that's out there every, oh. every month. <laughs> Pigeon Fanciers. Is there any magazines with the word fancier in the title? At your there's shop? both dog and cat fancier. Yeah, there's cat fancier. Yeah. That's a top old read, Rob. If you want to tear a couple of copies of that and send them my way, I'd be more than happy to receive them. And and are people still embarrassed to buy pornography? Uh, very much so, yes. Are they? That'll right. often be slipped underneath a, a zoo magazine or a women's yeah, weekly. Yeah, under a zoo. <laughs> <laughs> That's like putting red kryptonite on top of green kryptonite. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Nice to see that, uh, you know, the news agents is still there because... I don't. I mean, but surely porno mags are going to be a thing yeah, of the past. Yeah, right. right. You know? Yeah just feel embarrassed logging on in the future. Yeah, exactly right. Okay. Uh, okay, never mind. There's some great conditions. <laughs> Hi, Elliot. How are you? All right. About a year ago, we got ourselves a new manager, and he decided that um, it would look really bad in the public eye for us to have Christmas parties. What? It would look bad in the public eye to have Christmas parties? They're worried about us looking like bludgers or something. Oh, I look like bludgers. <laughs> yeah, hang on. Hang on. It's Christmas Eve. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a party. You're slacking off. <laughs> Elliot, what do you do? I work for one of the energy companies in Sydney. One of the energy companies in Sydney. Uh, okay. Right. So yeah. how did that oh, end up? They decided last year that um, it would look bad to have a Christmas thing, so they decided to do a safety barbecue. A safety barbecue? Oh, dear. Hey, who's it looking bad to? I mean, who's, I who's driving past the energy company? Uh, going, hang on, hang on, slow down, slow down. I think there's a party behind those walls. Does that man have a beer? Turn off all the lights. Turn off all the lights. It's a protest. <laughs> Un- Notice the electricity. has been very weak this year. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Look at this for kilowatt reading. <laughs> yeah. Does this look like I think we look more like a bunch of um, weirdos for not having a party. There you are. There you go, weirdos. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, energy company weirdos. Can I just say to anyone driving around in their car today, if you see someone, uh, you know, working as part of an energy company, mm. yell weirdo at them. That <laughs> seems to be the uh, order of the day. A lot of people say to me, you know, how did Ed Cavalier get his gig mm. on Get This? Let's go back to our very first show, and mm. this is a documentary, because I'd heard about Ed Cavalier. You know, there have been a lot of talk around the network, yeah. his work uh, in the Black Thunders, you know, mm. giving stuff away. Here's a documentary that shows where it all started. It's amazing. You go to any radio station in this country and the talk around the water cooler is Cavalier. What's he got for his next? And you have to wonder, I mean, what's he working on? He's an amazing performer, great energy um, and just works a crowd. I don't know where, um, where he gets it from, the patter, the gab. But he has got it. At their road trip every day this week. I mean, he's the man. Look, if I had to use one word, it'd be um, tour de force. I don't know. Every time I go, you know, into an in store or into just walking past a radio station, people are always just like, "Come on, in, you know, do a cross," and always coming up to me, asking me for you know drinks and CDs and stuff. Just do a cross, Ed. Do a cross. I've had announcers say to me that they're not going to go on after him. They can't follow it. I was at a function once and Lawsy took me aside and he just said, mate, I'm going to retire because if you're going to put that kind of thing to ear, crosses from the Black Thunder with Ed Cavalier giving away CDs, giving away prize packs, um, you know, nanopods, I mean... Street team out and about at Marine Parade and we've got the free stuff, Heritage Shock. Alan Jones said to me that he feels personally inadequate. Um, I don't think that's anything to do with Ed Cavalier, but... It might be. It's embarrassing apart from anything else. I mean, it's my work. It's not who I am. It's all seat of the pants stuff. I mean, he hasn't got a script. <laughs> you know, it's just all coming out of his mouth. I mean, I don't know where he comes up with it. I'm amazed they haven't done a bloody uh, a record, an album of it, because it's... You'd hate to think it's all just going out the bloody ether and never going to be heard again. I see all the 
the new guys, I hear the tapes, they come in. None of them, in my opinion, have matched Cavalier. You go to one of his crosses, it's like, you know, bloody honey. I love his energy for it as well, because a lot of people can be dismissive in that area, but he commits to it. Catch yesterday, 12 to 1, 15 minutes time. Now, look, I used to work with Brian Beery in Brisbane, and he retired because of uh, one of Ed's crosses. I mean, I remember he just, he just had it on. It was 25 seconds in, and he just said, that's it. And I had his resignation on my desk before Ed had even given away the the Alien Ant Farm album. It was tragic. A career in tatters. Yeah, look, if he's doing a cross, you know, they just come out of the woodwork from everywhere, you know, swarming. I mean, they know they're going to hear something concise, you know, and a bit of poetry in there as well. I mean, I once, uh, I was moved to tears once during one of his crosses from, it was an in-store by Wickfield, and I, I had to go and lie down in the back of the thunder. Uh, well, that's really flattering, but you, you know, the sad fact is it's, it's just not enough. I, I feel like I've got so much more to offer. There's a voice inside me saying, You don't blow like the breeze you were born to be. I mean, it's great being the best at this. You die down in the trees and try and hide. Time the Triple M Street team has about a marine parade. Will you witness the dark? Live cross of the year. All you need is a spark. And the winner is... A cathedral of torches light the night. Edward Cavalli! On That's all well and good. Here I am. But there must be more. I'm yours. So here I am, Tone. Uh, Ed, can I just say, this is all sounding very gay. What are you talking about? Well, that, for example. And it runs to you like a shallow, noisy stream. Shallow, noisy stream. Right, that's enough. Turn that music off, Matty. Hey, nothing gay about a shallow, noisy stream, Tone. Sorry, Ed. Go to the ID, please. Somebody. Get this at the new time of 2 o'clock. Or in Adelaide, 3 o'clock. On the Triple M Network.